Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to look at how you can get started with TrueDB using the JavaScript SDK. With the JavaScript SDK, you can seamlessly integrate TrueDB into your web and backend applications. We'll cover everything from installation and setup to writing and fonts queries. Let's get started. In this video, we will use Bun, as that provides TypeScript support out of the box. However, you can use any package manager and runtime you prefer. To use RuDB with the JavaScript SDK, we first need to install the SDK and set up a RuDB instance. First, let's open a terminal and create a directory for our project. I'll call it Misha's Clothing Store. Secondly, let's initialize the folder with Bun. We'll simply accept the defaults for the questions asked. Lastly, let's install this RuDB JavaScript SDK in our project. Step 2. Set up a RuDB instance. With our project initialized, we'll also need a RuDB instance to connect to. You can run RuDB locally or in the cloud. Running it in the cloud is perfect for scalable, production-ready deployments, but if you prefer, you can also run it locally for development and testing. For this video, we'll set up a free instance in Surreal Cloud via Surrealist. Create the instance. We can create an instance via Surrealist. If you don't have Surrealist installed, you can access it via surrealist.app or download it via surrealdb.com forward slash surrealist. In a previous video, linked in the video description, we showed you how to install Surrealist in more detail. Here, I'm in Surrealist on my desktop. Now, I'll head over to the Cloud tab. Here, let's sign in with our Surrealdb account. I'll pick GitHub and we're in. As prompted, let's create our first instance. We can pick a name. I'll call it Misha's Clothing Store. Then I'll pick Ireland as that's closest to my audience. And we'll make it a free instance. Once the instance is proficient, let's first connect to it via Surrealist to populate it with some data. Press connect, then open in Surrealist. Let's pick a namespace and a database. after which we can hover over the connection and populate it with the Surreal Deal Store dataset. Lastly, let's create a user in the database, which our application will use to connect to our instance by heading over the authentication tab. Under database users, we will create a new system user called app with password app, and we'll make the user an owner. Lastly, to obtain the connection details, let's head back to the Cloud tab. Here, in the context menu, we can find an option to copy the host name, which we can then use in our application. Great! Now that our instance is up and running and that our project is initialized, let's set up the connection to ThruDB. First, we have to import the Thrill class from the ThruDB package we installed. We can create a new instance of the class and call the connect method on it with the instance URL previously obtained. Make sure to specify protocol. We will use WSS to establish a secure WebSocket connection. Secondly, we can specify the namespace and database for our connection. We'll match this to the namespace and database we previously created in Threelist. To finish off configuring the connection, we can authenticate as the user app, which we previously created inside the database. Since the user resides inside the database, we also need to specify the namespace and database in which the user resides. CRUD operations. Let's put our connection to work by performing some CRUD operations. CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete, the core operations for any database. While you always have the ability to send custom queries from the JS SDK, it also provides a number of built-in methods for data manipulation. Let's go over some of them. To create a new record in the database, Use the create method. This example creates a new product with a specified ID, name, price, and stock quantity. To retrieve records from the database, use the select method. This example fetches all records from the product table. To partially update an existing record, use the merge method. Here, we are updating the stock quantity of a specific product. And lastly, to delete a record from the database, use the delete method. In this example, we are removing a specific product from the product table. Advanced querying. 
For more granular control and advanced use cases, we can also send custom queries to ServuDB. For this, we can use the query method. Custom queries. By default, the query method works by passing a text query and parameters to it. The method always returns an array of results, as you can send multiple queries at once. To easily name the results of various queries you send, we recommend destructuring the response. Prepared queries. The query method also accepts prepared queries. These queries, alongside their values, are encoded into the underlying communication format, CBOR, as you construct a query. This is useful for when you have large queries, or with a lot of data, which you need to reuse often, or perhaps add to at a later date. Additionally, we can leave gaps in the query, which we can provide when we send a query to ScrewDB. Here, we first create two gaps and some metadata. We can then use the SirQL utility in combination with a tag template string to easily write our query and embed these values right inside them. Now, we can simply pass the prepared query to the query method and add the values for the gaps on the go. The only thing which will need to be done by the encoder is to encode the values for the gaps and to construct the final instruction to ScrewDB. Live queries. The JavaScript SDK also provides methods to work with live queries, allowing you to build real-time applications with ease. To start a live query on the table, we can use the live method. With the live method, you will receive notifications for every change on a specified table. However, you may want to add some filters to your live queries. To achieve this, we need to use the query method to send a custom live selects query to ScrewDB. This query will return a UUID, which we can then use to manually register an event handler. For this, we can use the subscribe live method. Note that you can also register multiple listeners to a single live query if you'd like, with the UUID that you get back from the live method or from a custom live select query. In the case that we want to unsubscribe a single specific listener, we can use the unsubscribe live method. Note how in the previous example, we store the listeners inside a variable. This is so that we can keep a reference to the value. To unsubscribe the listener, we need to pass the UUID for the live query and the reference to the listener. To stop receiving notifications for a live query altogether, we can use the kill method. This will send a message to ScrewDB to kill that specific live query and also emit a last close message to all registered listeners before they are unsubscribed. And there you have it. From setting up your ScrewDB instance to mastering advanced queries, you're now equipped to build powerful real-time applications with the JavaScript SDK. To discover everything possible with our JavaScript SDK and to get a reference of all methods and data types, you can view our documentation, which is linked in the video description. If you found this tutorial helpful, you can subscribe to our channel for similar content. And remember, you can always join our community over on Discord to learn more about the latest releases and features. See you in the next one.